me just show you where we are. The most idyllic apiary setting you can imagine. Beautiful, we walked through this beautiful arch of clematis and there are the hives really and waiting for us. We'll start right at the basics for those who haven't done so much beekeeping and then build up as we go through. So let's start at the very beginning. We're going to get our clean hive tool out of the washing stoda. The second thing is lighting the smoker, which should be done away from the apiary. So we're 20 yards from the apiary, no veil, no gloves. Light your paper first and just pop it loosely into the smoker. Make sure that's really a light and then loosely put in, this is cardboard, shredded cardboard. Then you pack more. I'm using shredded cardboard and it's not gonna work. And crushed cones. Uh, Jane, can you explain to me why you didn't put any green grass at the top when you shut your smoker up? That's because I was going to use a very small amount of smoke. I know that I'm, I know the hive that I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do at the hive, and I'm not intending to use much smoke. So here we are at a strong colony with two supers on, um, and I'm going to inspect the brood. I'm going to start by looking at the entrance and checking on the flight of the bees, the number of bees, is there pollen going in and out? And this looks like a hive to me, which is about right for the time of day, which is quite early in the morning and the sun is not on the hive. So I'm now going to start looking at the hive. Now the important thing is that we leave enough space around our hive and that we know exactly where the bits and pieces are going to go. If you get a routine where you always put your apparatus in the same places, then you're not going to step back on something and uh, trip up. Go. So I'm now going to take off the two supers. I'm going to disturb them as little as possible. I want the bees to stay where they are. I'm not very strong, so I'm going to have to take them off separately, which means splitting them. I'm now taking the second super off. This is above the queen excluder, which means that it's an easier split. And I'm going to just twist and put it on the second lift. And I'm going to cover those bees with a cover board that I've brought along in my kit just to keep them quiet. There are a few bees on the top of the queen excluder that were in the super and I'm going to give them a little tiny drift of smoke. Hardly anything and you can hear the bees reacting and I'm then going to just leave them a second and I'm now going to remove the queen excluder very very gently. I'm not going to shake the queen excluder. I'm going to leave the bees on. It's warm and these bees are happy. But I am going to check very carefully underneath to check that the queen is not on the queen excluder. Then, just in case the queen, I've missed the queen, I will place the queen excluder at the entrance to the hive so that the incoming foragers are not disturbed by it, but that the bees that are on it can get back. Jane, how likely is it that the queen would be on the queen excluder when you take it off? Right, that's very dependent on the age of the queen and the maturity of the queen. If you've got a new queen, a newly mated queen, then she's much more likely to have been running around and be on the top. These bees are quiet. I don't want to ruffle them. The first vital rule about inspections is that you never move your hands swiftly over the top of the box. 
bring your hands round and move slowly and gently. I'm going to just encourage these to go down a bit, but really not much, because it doesn't matter very much that they're on top. Then they're behaving, they're not flying. I'm using the curved end of my high tool as a lever and I'm just going to push you out of the way gently, off you go, and very delicately, don't roll the bees, just slowly and regularly lift it up. Again, I'm not going to shake these bees, I'm just going to check, it's very unlikely that the queen is on this end board, just going to check, there's drones and workers, and I'm going to put this alongside here. Now Jane, do you ever use side clips? I don't. What I do use is a nuke, especially if the weather's cold or damp. So I'll show you that in the next clip. I've smoked them down again. I'm now going to take out the first frame. The first frame may or may not have brood on. In a colony like this it might have. In a much smaller colony, it's very unlikely that there's brood on the end. Now again, I'm coming in from the outside. I've got my hive tool in my hand and I'm going to just pull it towards me a little because I've got the space from the end board and I'm just going to lift it slowly and gently. Now, the 12 by 14s are very heavy and often I can't turn them. So I pivot them on a top bar and look at them like that. And then I can look at the face just by holding it. This frame has got brood on it. On a cold day, I wouldn't want that to be down at the front of the hive. Today, it would be fine, but I've got my nuke box, so I'm going, I've checked it very carefully that the queen isn't on it, but actually, if she was, she would only go into the nuke. So I'm going to very gently put the whole lot, I'm not shaking anything, I'm keeping the bees quiet and together. So Jane, you're not making a nuke box up then? No, no, I'm merely using it for this one first frame to give me some space to work in, but not putting it on the grass. I notice you're not using the smoker much, Jane. You're not puffing away all the time. No, look at the bees, they don't need it. The key to successful quiet inspection is to smoke only as much as you need to. If I happened to have a bee like this one here, which is on the frame I'm going to pick up, I would just give a little puff on the ends of the lugs so that I can free them up. And I then will use my hive tool as a lever just to prise the next frame away. And you can see I'm moving slowly over the hive and so this is a reasonable brood pattern, sealed brood. There's some baby bees, there's a little tiny baby bee emerging, there's a drone, there's two queen cups. They're old and established and it's unlikely that they are charged. But as I go through the hive, I will check. You might like to check that one. Uh, those two, um, but I'm confident that they're not charged. I wouldn't normally be flashing my uh, um, hive tool over the surface as much as this. This is purely for demonstration. I'm now going to just have a look at the next frame. checking for the queen. Check, do a circle round the outside and then move into the middle. Now your queen is marked. She's marked green which tells me that she was born in 2019. She is. Perfect. Now. So replacing this frame I'm going to put it close up and check the Hoffman spacers, press it in 
and now I've got a sealed unit and I haven't left all of the frames loose. You pack them up as you inspect. So the next frame, again, lever at the edges. You don't want to damage the frames, but lift it slowly. There's a bee there with propolis on its legs. Now, you don't have to see the queen at every inspection, but you do need to know she's there, so you need to look for eggs. And the best way to see eggs is to look at a frame that's likely to have eggs on it. Now, this frame is actually covered in sealed brood, so it's not likely to. But on this side, it's got, it's got sealed brood, but round the edges, so first look for the large white C-shaped larvae and then proceed with your eyes outwards and eventually you will come to where the eggs are. And to be sure, you need to hold the frame up with the light behind you and you will see a tiny glistening cigar-shaped egg at the bottom of the cell. is a short at the frame, a standard national, um, and it's to trap drones. And I will do an, in, an inspection, brood inspection shake for this one. If you, you do need to look at your brood at least a couple of times in the season thoroughly, and you can't see if you've got them covered in bees, so you have to shake them back into the depth of the hive. This is sufficient, this number, for me to see what's going on. When you're inspecting the brood for disease, then these, this is sealed brood. You're looking for a, a good regular pattern. Can you see here, you've got a line of empty, well actually they've got honey in, empty cells, that's where the wire is and I'm looking for any sealed cell which is discoloured or greasy and they look pretty good. And again, there are queen cups and you need to just gently turn the frame and look into the queen cup. Before the egg is laid in it, it will be shiny. So I don't think any of these are about to have an egg laid in them. They're just there as a safety measure for the pollination. As you become more experienced, you will know by the time you get this far if all is well, unless you want to do some complicated uh, manoeuvre. So I'm now happy that this is a colony that's got a queen. I know it's got enough space because I know the supers are not too heavy. It's not going to swarm. So I'm now going to close it up. Now I'm going to treat these four frames that I've inspected as one unit so that I don't squash bees at every single connection. So I'm going to just push them gently as a whole unit and looking at the, that I don't squash any of these. Job done. No.